Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hi there. Welcome back. So I, I have talked about this in the past briefly. We're talking about Mithras or Mitra or Mithra, uh, depending on where you are planting your feet on this globe. Right. He's somebody that I've never read about, never heard of. Um, but when I did peek at him, he was quite an interesting individual. So we see this was actually one of the traditions that was competing with Constantine's version of Christianity. As you see here, others worship the Persian. Well, it wasn't really originally Persian. We're going to get into that. Um, deity, Mithras, who championed good over evil and offered life after death. And Mithraism was favored by Roman soldiers. This is a ancient tradition and it has some symbology that we see. So can be referred to as, you know, looking at it from an astro theological standpoint, the ending of the age of Taurus and moving into the age of Aries in some ways, because we see the bull, um, the bull right there with Mithras on top of the bull. And the thing is that many view Roman Mithraism as being very, very different than where its roots came from. And we can go back to uh, Iran, Persia, and also the Indus Valley area, where it, the oldest references come from there. There's a close-up of the face of Mithras. Does that feel like him to you? Because Cindy's been able to contact mm -hmm. him. Yeah, it does. You know, if you want to personify him, I guess that's what he would appear to be. I got kind of a more more of a light being, but maybe he's on this 3D level. He's just made of an extraordinary amount of light. So, yes, he um, still exists, as mm -hmm. we all do, uh, just in different planes of existence. Cindy has gotten that he is on a 5D mm -hmm. right now. Right. And he teaches those people who are wanting to learn. You can see the symbolism here. To me, this screams Kundalini. Mm -hmm. It screams the Ida and the Pengala and the Shashamna. These are the nadis that the Kundalini flows through. So this was a mystery school, a tradition that went underground with the persecution that came from Constantine's church. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and I did get that he was... People looked up to him. He was level-headed. Uh, people wanted to follow him. Very well-respected, well-regarded. And you said he had kind of a titan energy. He did. He had a very strong energy. Um, you know, the, the titan type, maybe not when you think of titan, you think of, oh, you know, with big swords and going to hurt you and stuff like that. No, not that kind of a titan, but just a very big, strong energy. Yeah, very, very, very fascinating and interesting. So here we see, and this was an interesting little blog, Mithra, Rome's secret cult of Kundalini. And um, Mithraism, the ancient root of Christianity, perhaps, or a form of Christianity, was a seven-step spiritual practice to attain enlightenment. Approved state religion of Rome for 300 plus years. It was suppressed in the 4th century when Emperor Constantine merged it and other pagan faiths into one Christianity. And this author says, I wonder why. Well, my research was fascinating. Fasten your seatbelt. So his executive summary, Mithra was a sun god from the east, worshipped widely in 4th century Rome just before the Christian era. A secret brotherhood, society of Roman government and military emphasized discipline, empowerment, and ascension. Seven steps of the secret Mithraic initiation, something like Freemasons, led to a man's refinement to the level of a divine being. Underground cave temples housed the rituals, but very little is known about the actual practices. Astrological symbolism of Mithraism represents human evolution through the ages of astrology. Indicates knowledge of the procession of the equinoxes, the 26,000-year great year cycle of the ages. 
Mithraism uses symbolism of Taurus, the bull, planet, stars, zodiac, serpent, sun, moon, and Kundalini caduceus, intertwined snakes of Hermes and Thoth. Emperor Constantine ended centuries of persecution of Christians and solved his political problems by embracing Christianity. He silenced the awakening of Mithra followers and closed all non-Christian temples. Rome outlawed Mithraism and the pagan worships, merging and uniting them into his version of Christianity. Constantine created a new dynasty, making himself the head. He directed research about Jesus Christ, translations from Hebrew to create a Bible, interpretations of scriptures, and built Christian churches on top of the old Mithraic temples. Secret Mithra Brotherhood ended, and Roman secret societies were born. 300 years later, 6th century Roman Catholic monk Dionysius created a new calendar to count years from 1 CE. This was done in order to cancel the upcoming rapture and postpone the predicted end of the world by 2100 years. Oh dear, that would be right about now, hmm, wouldn't it? Conclusion, the Roman Empire never fell. It transformed itself into Roman Catholic Church in the Vatican. No, I didn't write this, guys, but somebody has been you know, doing their research, too. Rome became fabulously wealthy, guiding our lives, our money, and our reality for 2,000 years. What now? So, yeah, interesting stuff. And, you know, when I showed Cindy this, she said, hey, I know that guy. Mm -hmm. I know that guy. I've seen that guy in the sun. Yeah, so this is the Mithraic Kronos, right? It's it's uh, representing boundless time, but this is exactly one of the creator gods, quote unquote, beings. And again, even these beings, which are very, very, very high up, powerful beings, much more powerful than the Anunnaki um, or the GG, the reptilians, they're still not source in its entirety. No, mm -hmm. Nothing is, you know, that's, that's the bottom line. Um, although these these are beings like this one right here are beings that help to maintain everything that is creation. Mm -hmm. I feel that they do control source energy. They control source energy. And would you say this is a, a benevolent being? Yeah, I think he's okay. He feels okay. He feels um, responsible enough to handle that energy in, in a manner that's going to um, bring people up in evolution. Yeah, I, I found that very interesting. You know, right away you were like, I've seen that one. Mm -hmm. So in 1907, a large number of clay tablets were mm -hmm. found in the palace archives mm -hmm. of Bogoskoy, capital of the ancient Hittites in the north of the Anatolian Plateau. Mm -hmm. These tablets contain the first recorded mm -hmm. mention of the name Mithra, who, together with the Lord of Heaven, is invoked as the protector of a treaty between the Hittites and their neighbors, the Mitanni. The date of the treaty is some somewhere in the 14th century BC. BC. So, you know, 1400 years before uh, Yeshua, Jesus, walked the earth. And since the latest known reference to the Western Mithras occurs in the 5th century AD, these tablets show that the being was revered for nearly 2,000 years. And Mithras is no longer worshipped, but archaeologists, historians of religion, theologians, linguists have pondered his nature and tried to unravel the secrets of his cult for the light which these studies have thrown on the origins of Christianity. One insurmountable difficulty confronts a student of the Mithraic mysteries from the Eastern form of Mithraism or Mithraism, Practically nothing except documentary evidence exists, whereas the Mithras of the Roman world is known to us almost exclusively from non-literary sources as well. So because of this great gap, the story of Mithras is bound to be incomplete and distorted, and those who wish to read it must wait and assimilate the fresh discoveries that are made year by year. But in reality, the oldest uh, reference is is basically in the Indus Valley area, where he's called Mitra, which basically means friend, mm -hmm. you know, friend. And again, uh, referenced as uh, a very benevolent being. Mm -hmm. And that's the energy that I got from him, is that people looked up to him 
um, respected him and listened to him. Yes, most definitely. You know, so it's fascinating. And that whole, again, the, the Aryan thing. When the Aryan tribes swept down from the Russian steppes, they brought their gods with them sometime between 2000 and 1500 BCE. And that's a critical time period, too, you know, because we will have many attributing that time period to be in the time period of Abraham, you know, when uh, Abram became Abraham and left Ur of the Chaldees and started heading westward. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Which is, uh, yeah, there's been this battle that's been ongoing as Sassy's getting riled up here. It's this ongoing battle of control and of basically elimination of anything that goes against, really, in my mind, it's going against the Anunnakian, reptilian, draconian, Illuminati control grid. They do have quite a control grid, and they like to keep everybody under wraps, too. So when you do step out and start to explore something else, generally there's repercussion of some kind. Yes. So, you know, around that time, 2500 BCE, they say, and the timing is interesting. And if this is true, and there's a lot of people who don't don't believe that the whole Aryan invasion thing is actually correct as well. Uh, but they say these tribes entered India and Iran, bringing them one particular deity. These people, the, the Mitanni, gave us the first written reference to Mitra in a treaty between themselves and Hittites, signed 1375 BCE. The treaty calls on divine witnesses to pledge its terms. The Hittites called on the sun god. Mitanni called on Mitra. Mitra had been worshipped by the Iranians for centuries when Zarathustra, we call him Zoroaster, the Greek version of his name, founded the first revealed religion. Zarathustra announced the primacy of Ahura Mazda, the wise lord who was served by the Amenta Spenta, or Bounteous Immortals. Interesting, Bounteous Immortals. Among these was Mitra, whom Ahura Mazda declared to be as worthy of worship as myself, Thus, Zarathustrian reform did not replace Mitra in the Persian Iranian pantheon. It merely changed his role. Mitra might also, or Mithra, might also have been worshipped by the Mani. Some branches of Machianism identified Mitra as the ruler of the second or third emanation. And that would be in occult terms like a ray, an eon, or a sephiroth. But were whether there were actual rites of worship dedicated to him or whether he simply functioned as an anthropomorphic principle is impossible to say. In the Roman Empire, the same deity was called Mithras and was a central figure of a mystery religion that for almost 500 years vied with Christianity for dominance. Roman Mithraism differed so much, however, from other traditions that some scholars view it as a unique deity distinct from Mitra or Mithra. But we asked about this, and he said, no, it's the same. Mm-hmm. It's the same. Yeah, yeah it, it's the same being again. Things always get turned, twisted, changed, uh, distorted over time. There's pressure always to distort because, again, the power brokers that are in play, they want to control the narrative. That's the bottom, bottom, bottom line. And so Mitra, again, uh, basically his name means friend. And so, interestingly enough, uh, Cindy has gotten that he's, he is still teaching mm-hmm. Ascension Mysteries, but on uh, the 5D mm-hmm. level right now. Right. And anyone who does want to open their heart, though, open their energy to him, he'll, he'll come to them, you know, as long as you're not stuck in a, a certain belief system or a certain mainstream if you're open-minded he's willing to work with people yeah yeah and so of course a lot of people would be like thinking of anything that's not the quote-unquote god of abraham isaac and jacob as being uh must be a demon then so they'll be terrified too but recognize these are intelligences these are intelligences and what they were saying there uh is very similar to what we see in um you know, the Vedic lines of thinking, as well as others. You know, there are these beings on the higher levels. And when you get up into the higher vibrations, like you're talking 
you know, 50, 50, there still is some, uh, there, there's still the dark and the light, although as we go up in the densities, it becomes more and more light. Um, but there is this duality that does mm -hmm. exist out there. More and more beings know how the universe works, understand the oneness of things as you move on up the ladder, and thus they tend to be more benevolent. And no, not any one of them is the totality of source. Nothing is the totality of source unless you put all of creation along with, you know, the emanating creative force together. I totally, totally agree with that. That's very, very important to understand, too. This one talks about the seven grades of initiation as well. And I just wanted to share this photo because uh, this is Ariman. So this is the dark one. This is the opposite of Ahura Mazda. And uh, coincidentally, this looks exactly like some Anunnaki that we have seen. Oh, yeah, that one, um, that one person who makes those uh, pictures in a bowl with rocks, she came up with a picture much like that. Yeah, that was one of our family members over in the UK. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard from her in a while. Hope she, she's doing good still. Um, but actually, w there was two beings very much like this outside our camper in the Nevada desert across from Area 51. Uh, and I saw them clearly. They were watching us, but they, they weren't coming in. They weren't attempting to come in, uh, as we, we do have some protection by some ben benevolent beings to keep these type of beings at bay, but very much like this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, eerily accurate. Yeah, they're pretty nasty. So, yeah, there's the secret societies, and they've existed for as long as we've been on this planet. And, and in some ways... They are necessary when you're persecuted out in the open, as, as was the case. Again, Constantine not only basically got rid of any connection with Mithra and Mithraism, Mithraism, he got rid of, you know, with the Gnostics, basically. He, got rid, he just got rid of anything. Anything that was not his official version was deemed a heresy, and as time went on, you could be burned at the stake, drawn and quartered, boil alive, all of the above. Take your choice. Mm -hmm. That's pretty brutal. But that's the control. That is the control grid. So hopefully you guys found this somewhat interesting. This is just another one of those fascinating things that gets really swept under the carpet. It does, and it's sad. So hopefully you got something out of it. Yeah, thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. And anybody needs to set up an appointment with us, it's evolutionenergyarts at gmail or eearts at protonmail.com. As always, guys, God bless and namaste. Namaste.